This morning we're going to be continuing this idea of thinking about the relationship between when you get a bunch of equations, right? Like for example, this first one, and you might as well go ahead and write this as a pair of equations, right? We're thinking about the sort of translation between these equations and their visual counterparts. So when you see these two, that's a minus, isn't it? When you see these two equations, we can and we will handle them entirely as algebraic objects. But at the same time, the question that I'm posing to you of all of these pairs of equations is a visual question, right? Uh, it's a geometric question. Find the points of intersection. These are lines. Uh, one of them is going to give us a parabola, one of them is going to give us a straight line. Um, and they are going to intersect at some spots, and we want to find out where they are. Okay, So what we're going to do is think about how to do this algebraically. And then, um, if you haven't already, pull up in your devices, bless you, and have Desmos at the ready. Don't use it just yet, we'll get to the right point. We want to use it to confirm what we find, not to just take a shortcut um, and uh, not actually do the thinking on this. Okay, so. When we're finding the points of intersection between two different uh, equations, like this, between two different graphs represented by these two equations, as the heading suggests, what we're going to do is call on all our knowledge of simultaneous equations and think about solving these two simultaneously. Now the reason why that makes sense is because to find where these two graphs exist at the same time, right? what we're looking for is an x and a y right, that solve this equation but they also simultaneously solve this equation, right? Sorry, any question? Yeah, okay. So just as an example to illustrate why we're thinking about this, right? You don't need to write this part down. But uh, it's really easy to think of x's and y's that solve one of the equations, just one of them. For example, if x were equal to 0 here, if x were equal to 0, what would the y be? It would just be 1, right? Because y equals 0 squared plus 1. So this is a solution to this guy, right? But if I try and take it over here, if I were to put x equals 0, y equals 1 in here, what would I get here? Uh, I would get uh, 3 lots of 0 minus 1 plus 1. What does that equal? Zero. What? Yeah, zero. Does it equal 0? Is yeah, it? Yeah, oh, it is. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Right. So what we've got here, this satisfies both equations, right? So what have we found? This simultaneously, hence the point, right? Solves both equations. It's going to be one of the solutions. Now my question to you is, is that the only one? How would you know? So we can do some substitution here, can't we, right? I'm going to do it in a second before we go. My point is, before we do that, like I don't know that this is the only solution. There might be more. This might be the only one, but this is a really slow way to do it, right? I have to kind of check manually, and it's not very efficient, right? Preston, suggestion. Okay, so this is what Strang was saying. Let's do this, right? You know how to solve simultaneous equations in lots of different ways. Substitution was the first suggestion that Strang made. He said, look, there's a y here, and I can put it in over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to give these equations some names, and now I can work with them together. So I'm going to substitute 1 into 2. Everywhere that I saw y, I'm going to write down x squared plus 1. Just watch out, by the way, bless you, because there's a minus sign here, and it applies to everything that's in the y, and this is everything, right? Plus 1 equals 0. Okay. So this is a new equation that I can go ahead and solve, and hopefully it should give me all of the solutions, potentially including the one that we just found over here. So if I go ahead and expand this out a little bit, I'm going to get this. Uh, watch out for my signs here. Can I do any collection of like terms? I can. What can I collect? Yep, so that's just going to become 0. So I'm going to get 3x minus x squared equals 0, like so. Okay. What would you like me to do with this? I mean, I, I did the first thing you asked me to do, which is substitute. I did some simplification. Nishan, what are you thinking? So we can take the x Yep, so I could add x squared to both sides. I would then get an equation that said 3x equals x squared. Okay. Now, I'm just going to write this over here on the side. 
okay? This is a valid way to go about and solve this, but I'm gonna just show you in a second why I think that that's actually perhaps not the most helpful thing to do. I actually like having all the x's on one side, okay? Can someone suggest what's a different path, an alternative path I could also take? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I could factorize here, okay? Now, what would I factorize out? What is the common factor? X. It's x, isn't it? So if I take an x out, I get Three minus x. equals zero, okay? Now, I can actually get both of the solutions that I want, including the one I verified up here. I can get both of the solutions that I want out of either of these lines, okay? But I want to show you why this one I actually prefer to this one, okay? When you've got this factorized, there are two factors. Do you remember when we were looking at cubics yesterday? How many factors did we often get with a cubic? We would get three, because it's x cubed, right? So we didn't always, but we often got three. And from each of those factors, we got a solution. I have two factors here. So I should expect two solutions, yeah? One of them being the one you already found, zero. But now, and this is better than just trying randomly, I've got another solution, right, which is? Okay. These are the two solutions, these are the only ones. Now the reason why I think this is a little more helpful, factorizing going by taking an x out, is that if you have a look at this, uh, at least when I met these back in year eight and you did probably make the same mistake, I look at this and I'm like, oh look, I can divide both sides by x, which gives you, sure enough, an answer, right? One of the ones we already knew. The only problem is it gives you just one of the answers, right? This answer is still hiding in there, three times zero does equal zero times zero, right? But this way of writing it just makes it a bit harder to see. So generally speaking, factorizing is the better way to go, okay? Now, I've gotten to the end. I've sort of like said, cool, I've done all this work and I've gotten x equals, am I done? I am not done, why not? Usually we want to find x, right? And I found it. Ah, good. So you're taking your cue from the question, which actually doesn't just ask you for some x value, it asks you for points, right? So with each x, there's going to be a y, okay? So I've got enough space down here, I'm going to fit it in. When x equals zero, that gives me this value we already found up here, y equals one. But I have this other value that I also want to substitute and find its corresponding y value. So when x is equal to three, y is going to be three squared plus one, which is 10. Okay, now, here is all the information that I need to answer the question, but I think it's nice, being that they ask for points, that we actually provide the answer as a pair of points. Do you agree with that? Okay. So I'm going to get 0, 1 and 3, 3, 10. These are the points of intersection. Now, I asked you before to just pull up Desmos for me, okay? I want to confirm and also understand the meaning of what we just did, okay? So if you take, stay, if you take Desmos and you pop the two original equations in that we started with, what do we got here? Uh, x squared plus one. There's the first one. And then we've also got this 3x minus y plus one. By the way, what form is that line in? 3x minus y plus 1. We've got a name for this form. This is general form, isn't it? General form, ax plus by plus c, except we've got a 3, a negative 1, and a 1. So this is what I've got. I've put both of those equations onto here. Like literally, like a, actually, I need a y there just to make it complete, but Desmos knows what I was trying to do. There we go. Okay, now, can you see what we found and its relevance to this equation, right? Or to this picture, I should say, right? Where's zero, one? Where is it? It's, it's this first point of intersection. Do you agree? I found that spot by solving the equation. Where's three comma ten? Do you see where it is? It's the other spot over there, right? So these are the two points that we've found, okay? Now just as one last little sort of end note before we then go on to the next one, which I'm gonna let you try and do on your own before I help you out. Um, I wanna look at this spot here. Let me just move this up a teeny bit. There we go. See this line right here? Let me just highlight it for you. This'll do. This part here, right? This is what happened when we took our two equations, these two, 
and then we sort of jammed them into one equation. Do you remember that? And then we started to factorize and then we started to solve. Okay? Now I just want you to, in addition to these two, I'd love you to also add this equation as a third one onto, can you do that? Can you pop it in as well? 3x minus x squared. Can you put that on as well? Okay, now what I'm really interested in is, what does this mean? <laughs> and what relationship does it have to what we just had a look at? Okay, We started to look at this red and the blue line and we started to find their points of intersection. right? But when we put those two equations together, the new equation that we got out the end was this guy, 3x minus x squared. And then we had 3x minus x squared equals what? What were we equaling to? Look in your working. It's equal to zero, right? That's the green line. When is it equal to zero? There's the x-axis, right? And you can see, look, there's the zero, the first solution we found. And then there's, what's that one? That's three, right? That's the second solution we found. Now, can you see that solving this one problem, see where the solutions line up, is the same as solving the original problem, right? Where do the red and blue intersect? Is the same question as where does the green line intersect with the x-axis. So we've taken this like more complicated problem with like multiple things flying around and converted it into a simpler one, a single quadratic equation that we could deal with. Okay?